Hello everyone and welcome to All Blaze No Glory, the podcast. In this episode of the podcast, I'm joined by Neil McDonald of New Elgin Junior Football Club. Um, he is a manager there um, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about his football career and also a bit about being a manager in the junior leagues and what it's all about. Um, so we'll get right to that. So welcome to the podcast, Perth High School legend and alumnus, uh, Neil McDonald. How are you doing tonight, Neil? I'm very well, mate. Yourself? I'm doing, I'm doing well, and uh, thanks for coming on. Um, I want to talk about a subject that kind of fascinates me, um, mm-hmm. as recently I've been watching a little bit of the sort of, I guess they call it non-league football down here because they don't like using the word junior in West Lothian, but yeah. um, it's it's about how sort of junior football works. Um, so tell us a bit about your, your football career. I think we should start with, and I may be wrong on this, but did you not win the Scottish Cup with Perth High School? You can start there if you want. Yeah, aye, that was... Oh. 2001, <laughs> many, <laughs> many moons ago. Um, yeah, we had a, a brilliant squad. When you when you look at the the quality we had in there, um, you know, obviously we had big Scotty Finlay in goal, who was at St Johnson for years. Sean Burrell up front. You know, I could rattle off 14, 15 quality players in there. But uh, we won it at Hamden, and I think I lasted half an hour. And I, I think I had a slight tear in my calf muscle after half an hour, so I kind of sat. <laughs> And a huff at the sidelines for the watching the boys do the business, but um, yeah, and for there I kind of I stepped up to junior. I played juniors at sixteen. Um, Schoon Thistle was my first club actually. Um, I think it was about eighteen months at Schoon. Then I was at Genefield for a year, and then that was when I joined the Air Force and moved down to England. Um, non-league football in England slightly different to up in Scotland, so it was more. Because other teams back then were in the pyramid, whereas Scotland hadn't kind of adopted the pyramid scheme at that time, which they've done now, which is miles better. So I played sort of non-league football in England for years, and then when I left the Air Force, my wife got posted back up to Lossiemouth, and then that's when when we moved up here. I played for Dufton, Nairn St Ninian, and then I retired because my legs <laughs> my legs were shot to bits, and then since that I've I had a year at Nairn St Ninian um, on the coaching team there. And then I went through to New Elgin as assistant manager for, well, it was only a couple of months there. And the the manager stepped down. So I took on the reins and I've been manager since September last year. So it's, it's been a huge learning curve going from playing to, to managing. Um, yeah, but it's, it's been good. We've had, you know, we're going through a wee bit of a, a rough spell at the moment with... Struggling to dig out results, and we're, we've missed two penalties in three games. You know, just one of those. You know, I think we're stuck in a rut. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, just before we, we go on more about the managerial side of things, if you were to describe yourself as a player, who would you compare yourself to? Well, I was I was a left sided player. I'd love to say I had the pace of Ryan Giggs, but I'm not. I'm not telling you lies. Um, <laughs> My, my idol growing up was always Maldini, Paolo Maldini. Um, that was who I kind of <laughs> always wanted to be like. You know, when you seen him play the game, he just made it look so easy. Unfortunately, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have been doing something right to play for all those teams. But um, in terms of, of managing the team, what was the sort of routine like and, and how much commitment is in it? Because I'd imagine that's not your first job when you... You know, you would have a, a sort of a, a weekday job as well. Yeah, well, I work, I work um, for d- defence equipment, so sort of part of the Ministry of Defence. So, but I work from home, so I'm quite, they're quite flexible with things like that. But Monday night tends to be myself and the management team will be messaging, planning Tuesday's training. We'll be looking ahead at who we're playing on Saturday. Um, we'll also spend a bit of time looking at the previous game. You know, what went wrong? Like, what do we need to work on? This week at training, and again Wednesday night, we'll we'll be kind of looking ahead to Saturday, right? How's the boys looking? Who's you know who's training well? So yeah, it's then Friday night you're kind of going, you're, you're expecting call off. You know people get asked to work, child care. You know these kind of things come into it. So you know Friday night you tend to get one or two um, sort of last minute call offs, but we've got a squad of twenty five. Um, and you can carry 18 into a Saturday. So we've got a little bit of scope there that we can pull guys in 
sort of quite late on on Friday. And the guys know that if they're not in the initial 18, be ready because there's always a chance. You know, somebody can pull up on the warm-up, they can get a bug, you know, these little things. So I'd probably say the only day I don't do anything with the football is a Sunday. That's, I'm always messaging or thinking, and but Sunday's family day and that's that's set in stone. There's no getting away from that. Yeah, right. Okay, that's 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 cool. And in, in terms of the league, um, the, it's New Elgin that you you now coach. What what league are they are they in? It's the North Region Championship. So there's two leagues up here. There's the Super League and the Championship. Um, so if you win the Super League, you can go into the pyramid to take you into the Highland League. Um, Banks of D, they won that last year, so they're now in the Highland League this year. So that's our sort of route up. So, but you know, it's a it's a big step. You know the our league's very, very competitive. Um, there's probably five or six teams, I'd say, that are your candidates to definitely be in with a shout this year because they're very strong teams. And the Super League, again, some of the Aberdeen teams are quite lucky with, with sponsors in the back end. So, they, you know, they can they can bring in a better calibre of player. They've got a bigger area to choose from. You know, all these little things like that. But the Championship's a very good league. Yeah, cool. And um, when you mentioned the pyramid, so is that does that work that you then go from essentially if you were to win your league, win the next stage, you would be in the Highland League, and then the next stage after that is a chance to get into League Two, or am I? Yeah, it would be so the the winners of the Super League will go into a playoff with the winners of the North Caledonian League, which is sort of Inverness, the Highlands, and Islands, and I think it's it might be the Midlands League or the Eastern League, but it's Tayside. So three teams will go into a pyramid that are like a little playoff. And if you win that, you play the team that finished bottom of the Highland League. And then that's when you step into the Highland League. And then the Highland League goes into League Two from there. Right. So there's a, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot to, that happens at the end of the season then if you do get into Yeah. But the problem is is that there's only so many teams have meet the criteria to step into the Highland League. So if a team that wins in North Cali doesn't have, say, the correct floodlight in, they don't get to play in that playoff. So, right. so it's there's there's a lot of hoops to jump through. <laughs> <laughs> and um and what's it like? What is the football scene like in the in sort of Elgin, Inverness, and things? Because I always think that they're they're more into maybe other things like caber tossing and things up there, but that's maybe a stereotype. I think well, I think Inverness and uh, the Highlands has got a really strong shinty league and. I remember at Nairn we had a, a really, really good centre half that we were desperate to sign, but he was a shinty man and he wanted to play shinty instead, you know. So you do get things like that. But in Elgin, probably within about twenty miles of us, there are one well, there's Forest Thistle, Burkhead, Lossy United, New Elgin, Isle of Vale. So there's five teams within about twenty miles, all in the same we're all in the same league. So we're all kind of fishing for the same players. So it's it's quite Quite hard to get, you know, the right the right player in in the right position and things like that because you know there's going to be three or four, even five teams sniffing around, and then if you have got players that are of really good quality, you know the Highland League teams will sniff them. You know, because again you've got Bucky, Lossy, Forest Mechanics, Neon County, Rothis, Strathspey. You know, so you've got there's a lot of teams there to to, to look at the talent really because we lost I think it was three at the start of last season to Lossy Mouth in the Highland League, so. That that means that I suppose your your club's doing something right though, because you're producing players that are wanted for the league above. So, that, yeah, it's not a good thing, but it is a good thing in a, in the sense for those players, I guess. I've, I've always said that any player that that comes to train with us and wants to sign for us, if a bigger team comes in for you, if it's a high league team, I'm never going to stop you because I want players to progress and I want players to to step up in the game, and that, it's that's one of the main reasons I do what I do is that I like to get players and I've got there's three guys in the team just now 16 year old you know and they've got bags of potential just a little bit rough but if we work with them for a year two years there's nothing to stop them from stepping up into Iron League teams Cool, cool and is it is it you don't have to tell me what players maybe get paid but <laughs> is it a professional thing I mean somebody told me that players do get paid at, at this level but some 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 junior teams do. Um, we don't pay our players, but if we do have players that come from a distance, 
the club will look at fuel expenses and things like that. Um, but there are maybe not necessarily in our league, but I think maybe in the Super League, I think the teams do get some of the players do get a little a little thing. But you hear stories when you play, you know, like Sir Pollock and Auchin Leck in the Scottish Cup, there's guys on two, three hundred pound a week and that's not that's nothing that we would ever do up here. I don't think we don't have the backing for it. Yeah. yeah. So we do it for the love of the game more than anything. <laughs> it, fair enough, and it and uh, I suppose if you if you're getting a game every Saturday and you love football then that's yeah you want to play at the highest level you can. And in terms of the uh, the actual structure, you you we talked a bit about the league structure, but you, you mentioned the Scottish Cup and things. Are you guys in it? Is it a few cups you're in, or is it just the Scottish Cup? Or? We've got well, obviously we have the Scottish Cup, which everybody wants in a way day, you know, and it's always a big thing. And I was delighted this year because we got Schoon Thistle. So in my first junior club as a player against my first junior club as a manager, and it it kind of like it's, like, it's a real fairy tale with the cup, you know. Unfortunately, we got. Pumped, but <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was it was a it was a pretty scrappy game. Um, we just didn't start right. We were I think we were three 0 down at half time, and it took an absolute hair dryer Alex Ferguson half time special to get a reaction. And to be fair, the second half by far the better team. We were denied a stonewall penalty, and I reckon if we played in our three or four minutes, it'd be an extra time. You know, it was one of those games, but. It was good to go back and see how much Schoon had developed in you know twenty odd years as well, and there's a few familiar faces there too. Um, so yeah, we've got Scottish Cup. We have a what they call the Grill Cup. It's a League Cup. So again, it's regional groups, and then if you win your group, you you progress. So we got into the the quarterfinals of that this year. Um, I think they said it was the first time in eleven, twelve years that New Elgin had won their group, and then we lost the quarterfinal through in Aberdeen. Um, and then I think there's another two cups that we've got. So we can have four trophies plus the league. There's a lot, a lot of football to be played. Yeah, because um, someone I think once told me that the junior, the junior season or the the non-league season is is in many ways bigger than the the Premiership and all that. There's there's more games essentially, or, or they certainly yeah. last longer. Is that is that accurate? Well, our, our first league game was the end of July. I saw the league cup game was the end of July. And we are slated to finish the last Saturday in April. Right, okay. Um, we get two weeks off at Christmas New Year, but then we're, we're straight back into it on the first Saturday in January. Yeah, yeah. And is it, um, I've noticed in a few of the sort of, a few of the grounds that there the seem to be a, a push for sort of lower league teams to be putting in artificial pitches now. Is that something you've got in New Elgin? Is that something that's on the cards? Or No, we're, we've got, um, we're just on a grass surface. There are, I think there's three teams round about that have got the artificial Devon side. Banks ID are two that definitely have the, the artificial pitch. Um, but that's, again, their community um, playing fields that they use. Whereas ours is, we've just got a lease for ours now um, for our pitch for 21 years now. I think we just got that the other day there. So cool. our pitch is, it's, at the moment, the council look after it. But from speaking with the committee, there are plans for us to look at getting a local company that's going to maintain the pitch for us. And when the season finishes, you know, put some new seed down and all that good stuff. Because the council can only do so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 cool. Do you think it changes the game when you play an artificial pitch? Is it is it different? I mean, I've not played enough football that I would ever mm. notice the difference, but. If... What do you think as a as a former player and a and a, and a manager is? It's, it's it's weird. I prefer to play on grass because I think when you're on grass, you get a bit more realism to the game. You know, you, you know, juniors is well known for your what the, what you know your, your more tough tackling. I think there's a bit more. What was it? What somebody called? It? I can't remember. It was a, a cultured challenge. That's what <laughs> it was known as. But you don't kind of get that on the Astro. I think the Astro. You know, the four G pitches, they're great stuff. They're just so flat. You know, the ball rolls true. But there's two or three of my guys can't play on them because they've got old knee injuries, old ankle injuries, things like that. So there is that side of things as well. Right. I'm I'm a traditionalist. That grass for me. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I mean I have played rugby on one of the four G pitches and I can mm. tell you it was it was not <laughs> um, <laughs> um so uh just Talking more in general about your career now, um, 
you, you mentioned you've played some places in England and stuff. Where's sort of been the, the most memorable grounds you've played? Obviously, you mentioned Hamden with the, mm. the high school, but where else has been sort of memorable to you to play in and, and why? We played, the team I played for down south, we, we used to play in the FA Vars in the FA Cup. So you would play, you'd probably start at the end of June, July time, and it was like the qualifying round one. So if you if you won six games, you would get Man United. You know, that was, that was, <laughs> was that. Um, and we played uh, Woking one. I've played at Aldershot as well. Um, so, you know, good good standards, you know, really good teams. I think we were 1-0 up at half time against Woking, and we were like, here we go, boys. And we got battered six one because we just we just gassed out. They just had you know twenty minutes more fitness in them. Um, but you know experiences like that. I played uh, I played against Andy Sinton, uh, who was ex Sheffield Wednesday in England. He was managing uh, Fleet Town. It was at the time. So we played a preseason friendly, and I got an absolute schooling off of him for ninety minutes. You know, but <laughs> you learn so much for those games. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so when you said the FA Vaz, does that mean if you get knocked out early, you go into a sort of separate competition in the, in the FA No, the, there's, there's the FA Trophy and the FA Vaz, and I can't remember which is which, but the trophy is National League to, say, Tier 6 or 7, and then the, the other one is Tier 8 to 11 and 12. So, But they play both finals on the same day at Wembley. So you can buy it. I think me and a couple of mates went one year, and I think we were 20 quid into Wembley, and you got the FA Trophy, then the FA Vaz finals on the same day, and it was a brilliant day out. Really, it was a proper football day out. Good. Yeah, it sounds it sounds good. And, I mean, there's so much uh, so much football, I suppose, that people overlook. Uh, I mean, I've, as I say, I've been, I've been to see Broxburn a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I was in London um, a, couple, a few weeks ago. I went to see Leighton Orient. Um so I suppose it, I don't know about you, but I find there's a I don't know it's worth just going to see these smaller league games because sometimes you go and see the big game and the teams cancel each other out and it's, the actual football's not as, as entertaining. But mm-hmm. yeah, well, you look at I mean the, the game on uh, Monday night there, Pollock against Annan in the Scottish Cup. You know, Pollock the junior team four one up at one point and finished four three, a yeah. proper game of football. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, and do you, uh, in terms of um, travel and stuff in that area, is it quite difficult to get around to play all these different teams, or is it is it not too bad? Because I travelled from Aberdeen to Inverness once, and it was, it was a hellish experience. <laughs> not funny, is it? <laughs> um, no, we're quite we're quite lucky. We all, we've got a cut off um, at a set mileage, anything after that, and we'll take a coach. Mm-hmm. So oh. there's um, we'll, we'll know we know by Wednesday what numbers we've got so when we take a small bit a lot of the time we'll take a 48 seater through we'll sell seats we've got you know there's there's maybe a dozen or so guys that'll come watch every game so they'll they'll chip in for a wee bit in the bus and the bus trips are always you know the one thing I will say about the squad is that the team spirit is just incredible you know we've not had a good run at the moment I think we're I think we've lost five on the bounce you know but we've, we've played sort of three or three of the top teams in the league so we've had a tough run but their attitudes after it right training again let's go and the atmosphere on the bus on the way back is incredible there's always a somebody doing an initiation song and you know the usual the usual palaver on a on a on a bus trip you know yeah I was just about to ask you is there an initiation song for the for, for the, the newbies um, yeah uh, they've, they've all got to do they've all got to do their song at the front with the with a speaker and a microphone, so I'm still I'm still maintaining that management are exempt, but they're, they're, they're still not buying it from me. Like I'm due one, I'm, but and uh, you you're a very musical guy. So have you got a have you got a song that you your go to song for initiations? I'll go old school. Probably none of the young lads that know Tony Christie Avenues and Alleyways. That's my <laughs> that's my that's my classic. Like so, but none of the young lads would know it, so it'd be wasted. Yeah, probably. I sang uh, for my rugby initiation. I sang "Sex Bomb" by Tom <laughs> Jones, um, which went down quite well because I managed to get everybody singing the chorus. So. Aye, <laughs> to be fair, there's, there's been some absolute crackers. Uh, one boy stood up and done "Gangsters Paradise." Coolio, he done it a cappella, no music. He just rattled right through it. Big, he's an army lad. Uh, Mark, he just brilliant, class sense of humour, just no fear. 
that 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 is in there. That is very impressive. Now you mentioned you were in the forces. Did you play football as part of your being in the forces as well? Yeah, yeah, we played. There was a station team um, that we played for, and then obviously there was the RAF under twenty threes and then the full squad. So I played for played for twenty threes quite a bit, and then I played I think two or three games for the the full squad, and then um, I started having problems with my calf muscles and my I think called compartment syndrome in my calves, and it just got worse and worse and worse, and that's what ended up stopping me playing. Yeah, yeah. And what's the what's the the football scene like in the in the forces? Is there a big forces tournament or anything like that? Yeah, there's all well, they have an RAF Cup, and then you have inter services uh, competitions as well. And if you're in the the R the RAF team, you'll go and play a tri service tournament, much like they do with the Army Navy rugby and things like that. It's not as big, but uh, the football scene's huge in the RAF. If you, it's like any sport in the forces. If you're good at it, you'll you'll get everything you need to excel. You know, and you're kind of every Wednesday was football. You get afternoon off to go and play station football because you're representing your unit and things like that. So it was it was really good. I mean, again, some real quality players in there. So, oh, and I think they're all all very fit lads as well. Well, some was. <laughs> 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 yeah, I suppose so. Um, and uh, that, that's that's fantastic. So, what is your sort of um, the the next steps for for New Elgin? What what are you hoping to bring in the in the season coming ahead? I know well, that you're not managing quite as much now, but what is it you're going to bring ahead? Yeah, well, let's say I mean I've, I've kind of as we, we spoke about, I've, I've kind of stepped aside. I've got we I'm just undergoing chemotherapy at the moment. Um, I've got. Hodgkin's lymphoma, so it's just kind of sat in here at the moment in my lungs. But that's reducing so far, so, you know, there's positive steps there. So I've kind of stepped aside a wee bit, but I kind of said when I took over that, you know, the, the team was going through a bit of a rut. We lost a few guys to Highland League. There was a lot of older boys gave up the game, so we kind of had to start from scratch. So we've, we've, we've kind of had a rebuild. Um, I've got 25 in the squad at the moment, and we've kind of set ourselves sort of five year plan as to, you know, this year we kinda of want to get the squad how we want it, get them working how we want it, you know, maybe the results won't go our way every week. But we want to build that unit this year. Then next year look to kick on, push up the table and then find a cup run and things like that. So we're hoping I said five years I want us in the Super League. That's that's what I've I've kind of said to the committee. Um and I cannot fault that committee, that club one, but the guy and there's a husband and wife, they're just the heart and soul of the club. You know, the the, the, the president, Bill, again, just salt of the earth people that will do anything for for New Elgin Football Club. And, and it makes all the difference because you can go to them and say, can we get this for training? Can we get this? No problem. You know, job done. And as long as it doesn't break the bank, they're really, really supportive. And that's the thing, it's... You rely heavily on sponsorship at this level. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's fair to say you, you you've been in several clubs as you as you said, and I've been in a few uh, ice hockey, rugby, etc. Every club has these people that if you didn't have them, you would you wouldn't you wouldn't expect the club to be existing as well, you're sort of the type of people we're talking about here, I suppose. They're part of the furniture, you know, and like Bud, who's the the secretary. He's he run the S. He run the Scottish Juniors. He was the president of the Scottish Juniors for three years. I think they all take a turn, but he's done his stint, and everybody in football in the Juniors knows him. And you know his wife Joyce. She does all the, the she does the tea room on a Saturday, the pies. Um, you know gets the changing rooms already, and you know there's just a real good feel about the place. My wife, once I'm through all this, she's going to be joining the committee uh, to help with fundraising. You know because. There are things that need done. You know, we're needing the outside of the changing rooms painted. We're looking to get individual cubicles in the home dressing room for the lads to sit in. You know, just little things like that that gives it that sort of more professional touch. Because then people come and go. Do you know what I like the look of this? I want to be here. And yeah, just that's the big thing. It's just trying to attract players, but you know their heads can get turned by you know Highland League teams, and there's a lot of competition for players as we've said. Yeah, yeah, um, and in terms of, uh, of of anyone that's maybe interested in going along, uh, watch New Elgin, um, 
Where is where is the park about? What's the name of the park? Because it's probably... it's uh, Nickel Tognieri Park, um, and it's named after uh, two sort of club legends. You know, they played for the club. They were on the committee, um, and we're just we're at the back end of Elgin, just out towards Pinefield. Um, it was the old Pinefield Barracks. That's that's where we are. Um, just if you head out the A96 towards Aberdeen and just turn right into the industrial estate, we're in there. Um, let's say kickoffs at the moment are, are one one thirty with the winter hours, mm-hmm. um, and you're always guaranteed a bit of a laugh. That's one thing I will say. <laughs> there's yeah. a, there's always there's always something going on. There's always a referee getting shouted at, mainly for me. Um, but <laughs> I've got a, my daughters have got a swear jar for me. I got sent off three times last season for shouting at refs. <laughs> I promised. I promised. No, calm down. And they said, right, we're going to get a swear jar because you're going to take us to Florida on this swear jar. And uh, one of the refs, I told him about it, and he said, right, I'm going to help your daughters get to... He says, I'm going to get you to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I take it by the end of this season, there's a chance you might be going to LA, not Florida. <laughs> well, to be fair, do you know what? I've been, I've been pretty good. I've not even been booked this season off a ref. No, actually, I tell a lie, I've been sent off. I got sent off at Forest, but that was my own fault. It wasn't the ref's fault, it was me. I just lost the head. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, what I mean, in terms of the, the referees, it, do you find that you're certainly down here? I've been at a few games where it's only a referee and there's no linesman and things mm-hmm. like that. Do you find that there's a, there's a shortage still and they're needing people to put their hand up for that sort of thing? Definitely. I mean, I'm, the one thing I will say is, and I, and I hold my hands up, you know, in the past, I have given them a hard time. But I've kind of realised now, you know, that it's never going to work if I'm behaving like that. You know, and, and I'll apologise to them. And to be fair, there's a couple of referees I've not seen since last season. And the first thing I've done was apologised for, for last year. And, you know, it's a passionate game and it does get the better of you at times. But they're only human. You know, they're volunteer. You know, they're doing that off their own back. And they're brilliant people, you know. Um, but a lot of teams, we, we'll... We try and get linesmen every home game because we've only got a small committee. We'll just we just pay for linesmen, but some teams maybe don't pay for linesmen, so you just have a ref. So it's but there is a shortage, and I think that you know we do need more in the game. And I think there's obviously you've seen the campaigns in England about grassroots and the way referees are being treated, and you know some of it's absolutely shocking. You know when you when you see the stories, and it's not something you would ever see. And well, I've never seen up here anyway, but. Let's say the referees, personally, I don't think get the credit they deserve. I'm just trying to bottle them up now for a couple of good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> and as you've said, that Rangers have been awarded a penalty. Ah, well, there you go. No surprise, eh? <laughs> um, cool. Well, that's 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 brilliant stuff. The other thing I was going to ask you, you, you mentioned about you get a good laugh at the game and, the, and you talked about laughing with the refs. The thing I suppose is close to my heart and certainly if I'm ever dragging my dad to a junior football game, uh, it's hard. Is um, is it is the is the hot drinks and, and maybe a pie available? Oh yes, aye. Oh, don't worry. Joyce would look after you, mate. If you come <laughs> up, the old man, Joyce will sort you out. There's there's hot drinks, pie, and there's a wee bar that uh, the the away committee go into. So I'm pretty sure if you come up, we'd get you in there for a a dram at half time and get you looked after, mate. Excellent, excellent stuff. Now before uh, before we wrap up, um. I just wonder if there's anyone you want to give a shout out to. That way we can bully them into to listen to the podcast. To be um, fair, I just want to mention, like say, Bud and Joyce Rose that that you know are at the club. Bill Thompson, you know the the president, just great, great people in football. Um, and to be fair, my my assistant manager, coaching team, Davy Wilson, Davy Stephen, Richard Colley, Dean McCall, just great guys that you know they've they've stepped up massively since I've been you know. Sitting stepped aside, you know, and the squad, you know, they're a bunch of rockets, but I love them to bits. Honestly, I wouldn't change them for the world. There's some days they, well, if I had here, I'd be pulling it out, but then there's other days I just, I just stand back and smile, you know. The end of season two, they still, they still can't take it on the chin that the gaffer won the foot golf tournament, right? So <laughs> I want that published that the gaffer tanned them all at the foot golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my first uh, first time I ever the only time I've tried foot golf so far uh, on the first uh, tee I suppose you'd call it and I tried to blow this ball 200 yards or whatever it was that, what the tee was away and immediately I was like my hamstring is not going to survive 
<laughs> to be fair, I think I think we did have one or two injuries, but thankfully the season was finished. Then. And it was all it was a, a fancy dress day, so you had to buy so your name was drawn out a hat and you had to buy somebody's outfit and that's what they wore for the day. And there was some shockers like in birth. Oh, there was some absolute beauties <laughs> on them about. But it, it was brilliant fun and like, you know, the squad of players I've got, you know, there's there's so many of them could step up to, to a higher level. Um, but, you know, as we said before, it boils down to that hard work, desire, commitment, you know, that hunger. And when you're getting, when you're on the back of sort of four or five defeats, boys kind of lose that, we bit that hunger, we bit that desire, you know. So we're just trying to keep them, keep them ticking over. You know, we've got a tough game this weekend. We're through at Aberdeen Uni this weekend. So again, it's a tough game, but, it's a winnable game, you know, and that's what we've kind of just got to go into with belief. And, you know, speaking to, I've got three captains in the team. We make sure that they, we've got three sort of leaders. So I speak to them regularly. I just make sure they're keeping the boys motivated, you know, just in the, the players group chat where no doubt management will get an absolute panning on a regular basis. But just try and keep the boys interested. Try and keep them, their interest there. We want them to go into the game hungry. We want them to go in a bit of fire in the belly and hopefully we get that on Saturday um, we've got a new social media guy who's just come on well, he's only 17 and he, he sends me videos for games while I'm you know on Saturday I was in hospital getting chemo and he sent me the penalty miss and I said don't ever send me that again I <laughs> yeah. Um, I, well yeah no, you don't, things you don't want to see oh yeah um, I've just brought up you one last thing you just kind of brought up there with probably uh, inadvertently keep you on longer than I said I would, but uh, last time the, the I've, university... got, I've got I've got as long as you want, mate. Honestly, <laughs> I, the university teams. I saw there was a bit of a debate on Twitter following. I think Stirling Uni getting into a next stage of a cup or something. Mm. The university teams being in the pyramid system. Do you feel they add something to it, or do you feel they detract from it? I mean, most people seem pretty positive, but there was a few folk that weren't sure. I see for me. If there's a quality team in the league, there's a quality team in the league. It doesn't matter, you know, who they are. It's, you know, Aberdeen Uni, I think what you're you maybe noticing, maybe not necessarily them, but I think a lot of Uni teams is they'll maybe have a tough year because it's all new students that have come in and then the team might take a couple of years to to bond and develop and then they'll have a really good year and then they might drop off again because people have graduated and things like that. Mm-hmm. But that's part and parcel of the game. That goes for the same as us, for Burkhead, for Lossie United, you know, we all go through spells of, you get a quality player in, he'll gel into team great, and then he'll move on. That's that's football. Cool. Um, thanks for answering that, because I, I didn't really understand the debate. Personally, mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of with you. If they're a quality team, and it's not like they're going to ringers or anything like that, it's all students. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I, think, I think there's 17 teams in our league, and there's... You know, a lot of them are Aberdeen, Peterhead area. You know, so we're from cracking away days. Honestly, if you fancy it, you let me know and we'll get an away day. If you come up with us, we'll get you on the bus for a day and you can do a live podcast with the boys on the bus if you want. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe hold you to that after after the honeymoon and the Christmas period, maybe. But yeah, <laughs> so, so maybe hold you to that. That sounds, that sounds excellent. And um, just, uh, well, I want to give a big shout out to, to you for coming on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and giving me all this time, but I also just want to say that I have been kind of loosely following how New Elgin are doing. Yeah. I've liked the page and followed it and things like that. Um, and I wish you guys all the best for the season and, and I hope your club continues to grow. Oh. Uh, because to be honest, I went through a period where I couldn't be bothered going to watch football and watching the lower league teams has actually reinvigorated my interest in the game of football again. So Absolutely. I think because you're so, if when you go to a game, you're right on the pitch. You stand right into the dugout. You can hear the two managers having a wee bit to and fro, and it's it's foot, for me it's football at its purest form, isn't it? It's it's no sterile, you know. It's no one fans at that end, one fans at that end. Everybody just gets in, and there's always a bit of banter between supporters, and and like I say, it's I love it. I mean, I for me, I couldn't see me doing anything else on my Saturdays. The wife might have different ideas, but <laughs> for me, for me, Saturdays, Saturdays football day. But we're her getting involved in the committee as well. And, you know, when when I'm back for for this, you know, the kids will come through, and that's another thing we're trying to do is get 
get more kids involved to come down with their families. We've we've just taken on a new uh, well, a new sponsor. They're doing the after match food and drinks. It's the pins, this local bowling alley. So again, we can take the kids down. We'll get them a couple of lanes, and the dads and mums can go into the bar, and, and it's attracting more people to come down and watch us. And it, you know, if we get a ten, fifteen people every Saturday, the an extra fifty to a hundred quid. It's not a huge amount, but it's it's a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So uh, same message I made the last time I done a podcast with with someone. Uh, I, I done one with a guy called Doing the Park who covered Fife and Edinburghs. Mm -hmm. Amateur leagues as well as the junior leagues. The guy must have driven himself demented because he was covering everything. He's a bit of work he done. Um, uh, as I said, go and support your local club because if you don't support it, it might not always be there. And then when you want it, it'll not be there for you. So go and yeah. support the local club. And at the end of the day, much better value. And as you've said, you, you're on top of the pitch. You'll get a great laugh. Aye. You'll definitely not have to queue as long as you do at Celtic Park for a <laughs> exactly a, a pie. Um, so <laughs> so uh, definitely do that. Right. Well, thanks very much for that. No worries at all, mate. Neil, I'm, I might get you back on um, later on in the season. See how you guys are getting on. Absolutely, yeah. More than happy with that. I can yeah, I can even bring one of the boys on, and you can do a wee a wee Q and A with them about the dressing room. You know who's fastest, who's the thickest, all that kind of stuff. You know, just a bit of fun. Get them involved as well. I think uh, Mikey Mullen, he's desperate. He wants he he's desperate for fame. So he, we'll we'll get him on honestly. Well, well, maybe maybe bring him on. Maybe some kind of Christmas special. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, FC Christmas special. We can we can find out his famous Christmas songs and all that sort of aye. stuff. Aye, brilliant. Okay, well, I'll I'm, uh, I'll let you go. Um, thank you so much for for tonight. Um, no glad we got it in tonight. <laughs> ah, yeah. Apologies about <laughs> Tuesday. Just oh. <laughs> but. These things happen. I forgot to send you the link as well. So <laughs> thanks so much, and um, and definitely we'll get you get you back on, and uh, we'll keep in touch and yeah. watching El New Elgin FC. But all your stuff, mate. I'll make sure they, I'll make sure Liam sticks some videos on for you, so you can, uh, when we when we finally get a win, get some celebration videos for you as well, mate. Thank you. All right, Paul. Thank you, Daniel, for coming on the podcast. Really enjoyed that chat. Enjoyed talking about New Elgin uh, Football Club. Enjoyed talking about um, Perth High School, particularly reminiscing about that glorious day. And also just talking about the forces and all the different um, types of football and levels of football you've played in. Um, I hope you're doing well in your recovery, Neil. Um, I know it's only been a week since we recorded this, but I do uh, think about you and, and hope that you're doing well every day. Um, and I'm sure the listeners um, will as well be sending you all the all the best wishes they can. Next time on the podcast, I'm joined um, by Lindsay McEwen and Gavin Hogarth of Scottish Obstacle Course Racing, talking about that sport, um, the competitive side of it, as well as the fun social side of it, and why it's something you might want to get involved in. Please join us then, and thank you for listening. <laughs>